get us kick started, um, we have got two very wonderful uh, gentlemen. We have got Chris Herbert, who was the founder of the Spice Girls. <laughs> and we've got Ryan Edwards, who is the founder of Audio. Chris is non exec and an investor in Audio. Um, and I'll tell you what I, what I want, what I really, really want. <laughs> Do you know, I called, I called Chris last night and just said, look, don't remember to say you'll be there. So without any further ado, please put your hands together. Please go crazy. Please be raucous. For Ryan Edwards and Chris Herbert. <laughs> Right, I'll take a few. I, I'm not the Spice Girls guy. <laughs> Nobody asked me for Jerry's number. <laughs> um, Chris, I saw you recently on Channel 4. Yes. You look beautiful on Channel 4. You look even more beautiful in real life. You look fantastic. Yeah. You too, right? I, I wasn't beautiful. on Channel 4, thank you. I know, I was saying you look beautiful. Um, so, let's <laughs> You've got a proper TV. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, all do. Okay, let's, we'll get to Spice Girls in a minute, Chris, because I have the old, the old question or two, um, as you can imagine. Um, but all do. When I first heard about what you guys were doing, which is revolutionising the way that artists yep. basically get the, 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 the recognition and the money that they deserve for everything they play, this was one of the smartest things I have ever. It, it was one of the smartest, well, you know, because I basically went and cut my life savings and also invested in the business because it's just mind blowing what you guys are doing. Um, but let's just 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 tell us all then about all do and a little about a little bit about the inspirations to why this started. Cool. So um, yeah, let's see. All do is a is a tech business, and um, I'm looking at Greg. So Greg, Greg in the audience. I have two non-exec directors in the business, <laughs> Chris and Greg. So Greg's whooping for us, which is great. And I, I, you know, I was working for Greg maybe three years ago, and um, I, I was fed up with working for him. I was making too much money for him, basically. And and I, I, I took him out for a steak to say, hey, um, I want to leave. <laughs> uh, he made me pay for it as well. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and and it was actually because I've got another job, a better paid job. And and he said to me, he said, Ryan, he said, you have this business idea that you told me about. He said, what, what is it? And I said, well, look, I said, what you don't know about me, Greg, is I was in a band when I was seventeen, and I actually had a top ten hit single. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I cannot believe I work. You worked for me for three years, and you never told me this, right? I was like, yeah. And I said, and I keep hearing my music. I, I, I've heard it in department stores. I've heard it at football stadiums, all these. And my royalty check is going down. And I did some really light research to go, well, how did the royalty society who collect the money and pay me, I mean, it's like, like enough for a coffee a year, right? How did they know that my music was just played in a department store on Oxford Street or this? And what I found, the more the, the very light research that I'd done was they didn't, they had no idea. They, because they have hundreds of thousands of premises that are licensed to play music. And they were doing it with, you know, like kind of people going out doing manual reports, or they were asking people to send spreadsheets of what we played. So the whole system was not digitized, it was really manual. And Greg said to me, he said, he's still wrong, he's still be stupid. And I said, no, so I'm telling you, I said, this is like tens of millions of pounds. And actually we found out it was hundreds of millions of pounds, if not billions globally. And, and I, so I also told him, I said, look, I said, we've seen technologies like Shazam, we've seen technologies like, um, smart speakers and, and all these I said, and the idea is i said i would just build shazam in a smart speaker in a really secure simple way and greg went yeah but no right and he, and he did and he teased me and i woke up the next morning having paid for the expensive steak i'm giving him my reckon, uh, my resignation because i was going on to another job for about 50 whatsapps from greg being like i couldn't stop thinking about what you said i've been online all night i haven't slept you are completely right um, which, of course, I show my wife that text all the time, like, I thought I was right about something. <laughs> um, but, and, and, and that was it. And, and we went out and we, sh um, and so, so Greg invested in me. Like, he was like, you cannot take that job. He was like, I will only let you resign <laughs> if you'll take my investment, which, which was, you know, amazing from, from a boss to have. And we went out, I built a concept um, with a small team. And we went and took it out to the summer societies. And we actually started with the chair, chairman of, of PRS, which is the UK society. And I got a 20 minute meeting with him. I, I just messaged him on LinkedIn. I said, hey, you don't know me. 
could I just get like 15 minutes of your time? And we got 20 minutes of his time. And I was in the room for like two hours, gave him the full demo. And he was like, you've just changed everything. It was like, not only will I line this up for everybody in the UK, I will phone the guys in the US, all across Europe. He said, wherever you need me to shout about this, we will shout about it. And that was uh, three years, two months ago. Here we are. And we'll get to, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the point where we started to have people like Bjorn from Abba coming in as investors. But yeah. uh, on that note, let's go to this gentleman uh, here with Chris. So Chris, sorry to go on about the Spice Girls. Obviously, it's a massive part of Br British culture. Yeah. All of us all of us know the Spice Girls. Uh, yeah. Many of us still sing their songs regularly. I was going to see with their on uh, Alexis. I love the song. I love it all. I was even going to start by saying, slam it to the left, shake it. To the... I was going to get everybody going. <laughs> I, stopped it, I, stopped it. I, had to, I had to go check it myself. Um, but just, just give us a quick overview of what is it that brought you to this point where you're like, this guy is onto something pretty mega here. Relating that back to the context of you with your background, yeah. managing all these incredible bands here, say five. Yeah. I mean, it goes on, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a, a music manager by trade. I've uh, been doing that for 25 years, uh, run my own management company, um, managing artists, writers, producers, remixers, bit of publishing, uh, studios. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, that's, that, that's been my career to, to date, really, amongst some other bits and pieces that have been popping up as well. But it's, um, um, but throughout that career, I've been sort of plagued with the problem of, you know, inaccurate royalties and, you know, kind of the, the lack of transparency uh, in royalty statements. All our artists and writers have come to us and said, you know, uh, my music was played here. Same story as Ryan, really. My music was played here. How much did I get paid for that? You know, why isn't this on my statement, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just been a minefield and it's, uh, and it's been like that all the way through. So, and I've never really had, you've never really had the, 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 the answer to it. And we've done all sorts of audits and, and, and you know, trying to sort of pick through the bits of information that's there. Um, it feels like it's in the back of a fat packet. The way it's it, done. it really is. It's, you know, it's all kind of probable data and, um, you know, small samples and stuff like that, which they kind of then extrapolate the number from. And it's, um, so, you know, it, all the way through my career, I've been going, this, this needs to be sorted. And, and bearing in mind, I've, I've been in the music industry, you know, pre and post digital age, you know, sort of, you know, obviously, you know, Spotify and iTunes and that have come up, come along, and that's just changed the way we consume music. And there was this, this corner of the music industry that, for me, that just was jutting out, you know, just jutting out for change, really. Um, and, uh, you know, it just hadn't entered the 21st century. It's, you know, the systems that are used are 100 years old and archaic. Um, and there was a friend of mine, a mutual friend of ours, and, and an investor in Aldo, who said, um, I've invested in this, this, uh, this technology, this company, but more so probably the, the, the founder and the CEO. Uh, you know, it sounds good, but I don't know anything about music, really. Do you want to come along and, and, and meet him? So we met down the pub one a couple of summers ago. And, uh, Best place to do business. Yeah, exactly. And sat down with Ryan, and Ryan was 15 minutes into the pitch, and I was like, hallelujah, this is not only your delivery, the, you know, your tenacity, the way you were, you know, kind of... Um, uh, pitching this to me, but also, but the idea itself, I was like, this is this is brilliant. Someone's finally come up with it, the answer to to the to the uh, the problem. And um, you know, it was, it was yeah, half hour in, and I was like, right, where do we write the check? Do you know, know, I, I think I remember when that works. I think it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. You said I, uh, you said I can't tell you. He's got this incredible message. Just trying to can't tell you. So it's kind of like a really massive uh, girl group. <laughs> I think that's giving it away, but let's, yeah. let's just I'll let, I'll let you think that I haven't really picked up on that. But anyway, um, so 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 that's awesome. So take us now to the fact. How should we do this? Let's go to the series A. Okay, okay. let's go to the series A, and then we'll talk about the hyper growth that you've had since then. Mm -hmm. But in terms of picking up some of the huge investors that you have, 
Right, Bjorn. Are you allowed to mention other big names that have joined just, recently? No, just Bjorn. No? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the last night, no, so I thought I was cautious on that. It's good that we did it on stage, <laughs> not, not in front of anybody else. <laughs> yeah. But taking us through to the Series A, what was that 12 months like running up to that then? That all of a sudden the product really started to, I mean, the results you were getting yeah. showing this is bang on. And for those that don't know, it's a little device you plug in, is yeah. it? Yeah, so we call it an audio meter. So it's a it's a small, it, it looks like a nightlight, like a plug. It goes in, we have a microphone array in there. We, we capture all the music that's played, strip out all the background noise in a very GDPR secure way as well. And that monitors the music and we report it all in real time. So yeah, so because you're probably all saying, what is it? So yeah. Well, it's not as easy as, you know, you spoke, yeah, about, you spoke yeah. about, you know, smart speakers and stuff like that. It's, you know, because of the, it has to be GDPR compliant. It yeah. does all the fingerprinting in the device and sends that down the wire to us. So, um, you know, it's more complex than yeah. that. I still think in the first version you you sent me a video, didn't you? I did. I still think that was an echo dot. I said, oh, you're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so, but, yeah. 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 So, I, I guess, yes, yeah, so to give you the joke, you know, we, we did three prototypes. Yeah. One was um, a, a Raspberry Pi device. Most developers will know that, you know, pre, pre-built board, um, which may have had 10 preloaded tracks so I could play it in front of people like Chris and say, hey, look, it works. And they go, yeah, it really does. So let me play another track and then that would work as well. Because that's what you have to do. It is always a bit of smoke and mirrors at the start to, to, to get to there. And then, um, you know, because the business was three, three, three and a bit years old now. So kind of two years ago, we were at the point where we'd got markets around the world, you know, almost phoning us on a daily, weekly basis saying, hey, you know, when are you coming to Australia, South Africa, Brazil? I mean, it was just, we we're just getting these emails and I was like, how, how do these people even know who we are um, outside of having an amazing marketing team? It was genuinely all, all incoming. And that was really unusual because, you know, I've worked in businesses that to just get customers is, you know, is the biggest challenge. And we were always sat there going, we, we can't get to you. Like, we can't do this. We don't, we don't want your business at, at, at some point, which is strange. So we, we took a step back and said, well, right, how, how do we grow? How do we grow at an, at an exponential rate? And, and you know, the, the obvious answer was to raise money. And we did a Series A funding round, which two years in seems kind of a crazy statement to be, to be doing that. So we raised £5.2 million pounds and we did it in, in less than seven weeks. And we we're backed by a, a prolific British family office. Who nobody would really know their name. And, and as we were kicking off the round, um, we also went for the Abbey Road incubator, so we worked really close with the Abbey Road team. We were amazing support for us. Just that, that is really hard to get onto, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So when um, well, they only take one one business a year, and it's it's pretty pretty grueling. So um, we sold it in half. So you know they've been an amazing support for us, and um, and you know we'd had some press and we'd had some things happen, and I just get this email out of the blue, and it says, um, "Hi, my name is Bjorn, and uh, I love what you guys are doing, and I'd love to find out more." Um, could we have a call? <laughs> of course, the email is Bjorn Udless from ABBA. So I phone at Chris and I'm like, I think he, I think Bjorn from ABBA just emailed me. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, it's the greatest trial of all time, right? And and and, and we were like, he was like, he emailed him back. I was like, okay, cool. So I was like, hi Bjorn, like great to meet you. Mom's a massive fan. Like, you know, can I get an autograph? You know, will the tour ever happen? And um, and and. And, and, and like there's a couple of back and forth on email and he's still well, let's jump on a zoom and i'm, I'm still like this is this is not going to be him right this is this is going to be one of my mates just trolling me like, i'm convinced it's going to be alex or george just just taking the piss and and we get on and he's just he's sat there in his summer house in sweden yeah. you know and he's the president of csam which is a which is a, a global business which looks after all the performing rights organizations and he again he said look he's what you're doing he said he said i've been asking for this my entire career he said you know he said there were interviews of me in the 60s and 70s saying we needed this he said i knew it couldn't be done then he said but you've actually done this and then he closed at, at the end of the call he said hey he said if you're ever raising money right he said, just just let me know he said i'd love to to invest <laughs> okay and, and i think chris was like yeah well, we've got a funding round going right now and and, and he's like great how do I invest? <laughs> like, and, and it was that. So of course, we'd actually agreed the deal with the, with our lead investor. So I had to bring them up and say, "Hey, um, Bjorn from Apple wants to put some money in. Can can we let him do that?" And they were like, "Hell yes! Like, get it, get it done." And and what I would say is, is Bjorn is. I mean, he's amazing. You, you know, we, we, I dip in and out of music. Chris has spent his whole career in it, and um, you know, you you meet some of these artists, and they they sit behind these massive teams. Bjorn was not like that at all. It was all direct with him. 
he, you know, he asked me to email him the paperwork. He did. He sent it back. I think my mom's got that framed on her wall now. It's got the <laughs> next to mine. And um, he sent the money himself. And, and that was it. And and since then, he has been a massive support, you know. And all the time I get emails and say, hey, you know, and it'll be like the most senior people in the music industry. And it's like, hey, I was at dinner with Bjorn last night and he told me to email him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like the president of some of the biggest record labels in the world. And because, uh, you know, I mean, look, when, when he turns up, right, let's let's face it, if Bjorn, if Bjorn was on stage with us, I think there would be a massive queue out the door. I mean, there's quite a few people here already. But, you know, and, and that's the gravitas that he has. Um, but... And I remember saying to him, I said, well, you know, you can, everybody can Google his net worth, right? He's, he's got a few quid, he's done all right. And I said to him, why? I said, you know, is it, is it the return on investment? What, what, you, what is it you want? And he said, to, he said, he said, Ryan, I don't care about the money. He said, I'm doing this for the next generation. Mm. He said, that's, that's everything. He said, as long as the wow. next generation get paid, he said, then it's worth it. I was like, wow. Cool. And that, that's him. So, yeah. And we've had there's, there's several key figures in the music industry yeah. have said exactly the same yeah. thing that they kind of want him, and it's for that that purpose really to, to kind of give back to that next generation and fix it for, for, for that you know the ones that are coming through. Uh, they've had the you know they've had the good times yeah. Yeah. and they want to pay back. So in terms of taking out some of those lovely nuggets from anyone in the room yeah. who has got their eyes on the series, eh? yeah. You said seven weeks, which is rapid. Yeah, it's yeah. Insane. Because one of the things you always hear is it can go on. Yeah. And on. <laughs> and on. Some more. What are the the sort of the key things that you learned from the experience and health advice that you could give in terms of nailing it and making sure that you are ready to, to rock and roll with the, the whole process? Just talk about um, the you know the first kind of offer. Yeah. How we went into it. Is this yeah. when you offered twenty? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there were two things. Um, so just before we did the Series A, um, we actually had an acquisition offer for the business, um, which landed, so I think it was like March 2020. So yeah, I mean, we just wanted to look at Yeah, would have been a really good time to just take the money and sit back. Um, and, you know, at this point, I still own 78% of the business, and it was, it was over a £20 million offer, which, you know, considering the business was 18 months old, pretty good offer um but actually the and it sounds corny but the mission is 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 way more than that to, to what we do you know we have an amazing and passionate team and you know you can't just just throw you know what i like to think is is, is my billion dollar idea you know there, there, there isn't much else up there other than this so you know I, I wanted to stay with it so we had that which really validated that we had a valuable business um the second side then is is prep is everything. If we get to the I've got to ask one question. Okay, go on. to so I'm thinking here, Greg, yeah. Chris, you in the room, Okay. 20 million on, on offer, <laughs> lockdown, the world is ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're all yeah. shit scared. Yeah. We're all thinking that is it. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> what was it like? Oh, God. It was... As that was happening, was, was there anyone going, do you know what, guys? Do, 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 I'm just saying, for a split second, was there. Tempting. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you are human. This is <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was, and, and I, we went over, it went on for a few weeks, you know, and, and we talked collectively, we talked individually, and actually the, the best thing for me in, in the scenario, you know, because let's face it, you know, the, the early stage investors would have got a good return, um, but, you know, Chris and Greg were saying to me, Ryan, this is, this is a massively life-changing for you, of course it is, um, but the big thing is, and, and maybe they were doing this deliberately because it wasn't on them, and they were saying, we'll just back what you want to do. You know, whatever you want to do, whether you want to stick with it and go with it, or you want to sell it, you know, we will, we will hundred percent back you. So yeah, you did. yeah and they Chris, did, you yeah. Okay, yeah. Right, which yeah. I was like, yeah. why can't you just tell me what to do? You know, <laughs> but, but and, and that and that was it. But um, but yeah, and it and it does help by the day. And then I guess yeah, going into the round, prep prep is key. Um, I'm very lucky. I married an accountant, so you know, we've gone through this offer. Big shout out you know, to Holly so, in the room. Yeah, she is in the room somewhere. <laughs> No, you never see a cheer for a cat. But but um so and of course the, the business, you know, we we'd mm. done, you know, we had a chartered accountant and we were using accountancy software, but it was, you know, we, we didn't have a finance team internally because we were too small. We were only we were only like less than ten people at this point. And you know, so we and, and actually as part of that acquisition offer, they'd asked us to produce some accounts. And I remember one evening I was sat there really stressed because they're asking me for deep account, you know, I'm good with numbers commercial but you know they're asking me for proper management account led stuff and i, I she's like what's the problem that's this and i'm like this is what they're asking me for and she like she did it in like half an hour and it was like oh my god right now now i know why i need a management account in the business 
Um, and of course, we knew we then needed to raise, and we we had to look at all of our forecast numbers and absolutely everything from scratch. So Holly Holly came in just on evenings actually just to support me, and we built a whole finance model from the ground up. And it goes back to Greg yet again calling me a dick because you know I phoned him and I said, Greg, you know, and and, and I didn't say my my. We had a two. We have a two and a half year old daughter, so my wife had just finished pregnant um, uh, maternity leave. So she did all these numbers, and she said, "Well, you know, Greg's an accountant. Can you just send them to him just to sense check? Because it's you know, like oh, I've got baby brain and, and all that kind of stuff going on." And Greg again, he said, he said "Brian, he said, why is Holly not working with you?" He said, "Is this is somebody who can help you and and knows the business from the ground up because she's been sat at your kitchen table with you for the last two years." while you've been doing this. And that was it. And we, we produced a really, really strong financial model that showed what we'd done, where we were going, how we needed to deploy the cash, you know, exactly. Um, and then we went and started a few conversations with these family offices. Um, well, well, we started some with VCs, which, you know, if there's any VCs in the room, sorry, just, just. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. So, um, I know, well, you just, you're just, they're, they're, you know, politely, you're, you know, you're worse than traffic wardens. Just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you make them look like saints or planning officers, seriously. And 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 they do. They politely, they waste your time. They they are happy to sit on calls and just go and just ask questions. And, and you say to them, you know, what's your investment mandate? How does it work? What's your process? And the second they can't answer it, which was every single one I spoke to, it was like, okay, this is just going to go around in circles. Um, and then actually for you, we, we met a wonderful, wonderful family office um, who have a really diverse portfolio from everything from tech to property to mining, completely utterly. And they, they love businesses that have good path to cash, good profitability, and that are actually really meaningful in what they do. So of course, we jumped on, we took them through the numbers, we introduced the team, we got some of, we are surrounded by an amazing advisory board of like amazing people from the music industry. They, we got call set up with them and everything just clicked into place really, really quickly. I won't talk about the legal process because that was horrific at the end of it, but actually the raising, the due diligence, everything that we needed to do was yeah weeks and and you know they deployed the cash off we went and they they have a board seat with us as well in, in kind of a silent capacity and it does a few things it keeps us on our toes i think greg, greg and chris would would agree with that you know because we, we feel very accountable to them because they put in a large amount of money um and, and actually they're just about to, to top up and, and help us grow even faster um but actually they they've been there they've done it it's what they do day in day out so they they see the mistakes they have an amazing network of contacts and uh, and yeah, that's that was, you know, kind of this time last year. So armed with, armed with some serious reserves now. Yeah. I want to quiz the both of you in terms okay. of your respective roles and what it's like. So I'll come to you in a minute in terms of all of us in our big team. Yeah. Over thirty people now. Uh, nearly fifty. Okay, uh, nearly fifty. You've got all these PRSs around the world wanting to now implement your your units, yep. your pro your product. Yeah. Chris, mm -hmm. as a non exec. How do you how do you best work with a really ambitious entrepreneur who wants to make a massive dent in the universe? When do you know when when do you know when to say let's calm down, and when do you know when to say all right the blood is going let's let's make it even redder? Well, the good thing about Ryan is that there isn't there isn't this divide. There's no no real hierarchy, and that's from that's right across the whole team. So you you just support him. You know, there's not it's not. You know there isn't a boundary where to step in and where to step out um and and this i feel so passionately about this business um and what what our our journey and what our mission is that that i don't really want to step back you know i i, I like being involved you know right across the business talking to all the team and um just trying to help and embellish where i can um, but just generally supporting everyone, and, and uh, so there isn't. I don't think there's really any framework as to 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 what my role is and where I step in and step out. It's 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 just being there on, almost on a daily basis, really. Definitely, we speak yeah. what, if not every other day, if yeah. not every day. It's, every it's day. a case of two become one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, very good. But, but what I'd say, and and, and to anybody who's you know does or doesn't have non-execs in your businesses, Chris Chris and Greg and, and Casey from the panel are always at the end of the phone mm -hmm. um, and actually way beyond the business. So, um, you know, the Series A was all right. 
in the middle of the house renovation at the moment. And, and Chris is my property developer. So quite often I phone Chris and I'll be like, Joe, look at the price on these light bulbs for me or something. So it's 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 so much more than just helping me in the business. It's generally that that just life support as well. You know, it's a I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm looking at this, my toddler's not sleeping. Chris, do you remember that 18 years ago? What did you do? He's like, I went on tour with five. Like, I don't have that choice. But but that's it. It's having just those people who you can just ring and just be like, I just I just need to offload sometimes and, mm. and do that. It's huge. And I saw you a couple of weeks back mm -hmm. and straight away I was like, Ryan, you've changed. It's just something you didn't straight away you said I put on weight. I was like, no, Ryan, it's not you got on weight. You still look you still look lovely. Um you just seem to have more of a, a CEO edge to you. And I mean that with the greatest respect, but someone who clearly is used to a lot of balls in the air, juggling a lot of stuff, yeah. a lot of worries, a lot of excitement. So how have you kind of evolved with the role of going from someone in their bedroom, yeah. you know, thinking about an idea, starting to get people to come along to now running a team yeah. that is growing and growing and growing with, with huge world potential with the, with the revenue? Yeah. So I, I think there's two sides. Um, as Chris said, we, we operate a really flat structure in the business. So um, I, I all the time have imposter syndrome. Like I, I like when I get described as an entrepreneur in the press, it, it makes me feel really weird because I don't. I just see myself as I started this little business that was going to support my family, and it just became this huge thing, or was becoming this huge thing. Um, you know, so I, I don't have a PA. I don't intend to have a PA. You know, we are really humble in our roots, but. The team that we've built around us, so so our C team, I'm looking, Debs is in the audience here, Jess, I know Alex is here, I'm sure some of the team might be watching online. I firmly believe in my head that all of our team are way better at their jobs than I ever would be, right? So I, I could probably not get a job as a CEO. Like I, I, you know, I, I had to give myself the job to get the title. So Greg, Greg wouldn't give me a thing, but um, but and and I and I see that, and actually, on a daily daily basis, you know, as as a relatively new team, you know, a couple of years in, you see them taking control of their their whole areas, and and I sit in these meetings with them, and they're so in control of everything they do, and you're like. Actually, I'm I'll probably made myself redundant soon. But but everybody that we've surrounded ourselves with, be it the advisory board, be it the team that you know, kind of our C team, the team that sit below them, and and, and everything that they do, they are the absolute best and experts in what they do. Um, they are completely passionate. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it's not very often you meet somebody who doesn't love music or you know can't tell you about their favorite concert or their favorite album or who their heroes are etc so they they see this as a route in and they and they just love being involved and immersed in the in in the whole thing and and i think for me that then gives me the confidence to i guess as a ceo project a bit more um you know i know alex our cmo is in the audience you know alex loves sticking the camera in my face i can't see him i am looking for him oh he's always like that so um the, the side that i hate <laughs> politely actually this is the bit i i would if i could i would never do you know i, I hate the press i don't not not hate the press but well sometimes <laughs> um but, but you know it's it's just it's not a natural thing for me to to have to go in and, and do those interviews and be part of it you know i i just a guy who had an idea and started a business and lots of people backed it um and just surrounding myself with the best people you know i know toby our recruiters in the room as well from from spinks who they parachuted an on-site recruiter because you know like when you've got five million quid you have to spend it you know pretty quickly and get you know get a get a big team so they've done very well out of us as well but um but but you know everything that we said to them you know before we even gave them job descriptions we were like this this is the person that we want we want people who are absolute passionate who want to grow their careers who want to be part of a team that just will not give up you know it doesn't matter what barriers go in front of us you know it's like we you know and and we want them to all be completely evolved and, and do it so you know whenever whenever somebody joins the team you know, their first day, I, I always have this thing that I have to be the first person to welcome them. You know, so oh, um, yeah, so even if they're remote based, you know, it's uh, you know like 10 a.m. Monday morning, the Zoom is with me before their line managers because I just want to say hey, and and you know, and, and I actually do the chat and I'm like, so who's your favorite band or who's your favorite singer? Um, and, and and some of them are really smart because they'll have read the interviews and things. And you know, I always say my favorite band is Blink 182. In fact, Michael, who joined a couple of weeks ago, he said, um, he said "Well, I know the answer to this. I love Blink 182. Said, yes, great. It's promoted. Double your salary. What do you want?" So, yeah. and, but that's it. And 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 that's how they're getting to know us. Um, yeah. And we're really, I like think we're a really family orientated business. You know, we you know we, we we give time off. You know, we've just done it for Christmas. You know, we said to everybody, everybody with kids. 
you know, take a half day in December so you can go to their nativity. If you don't have kids, so you get to sleep at night, take a half day for shopping, you know, just just make it about the team and, and just empower them to do what they need to do. Yeah, okay. Anybody, would anybody like me to talk about the Spice Girls for a bit? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, me too. I've been waiting for this moment. Let's, let's, let's get to, I'm, I'm me too, no, me too as well, I do. Let's, let's, let's get to the Spice Girls. Okay. So we, 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 we've got a few minutes, so I think it would be criminal of us not to, to touch upon this. Okay. What was it? that led to that moment when you decided, you know what, let's create, let's create a, a girl band. And did you know how big they were going to be? Um, probably very similar to Ryan, really, that, that you kind of created, created the role. Um, you know, uh, my, I never wanted to be a manager. I actually wanted to be an A&R, um, artist and repertoire, you know, within a record company, making records um, and, 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 Talent scouting, um, but at the time I was a young manager. Well, I was, you know, I was starting out. I was sort of twenty, you know, twenty-one, and couldn't couldn't get arrested. I couldn't get that that gig, uh, a major record label. So I kind of went. Well, do you know what? Then what I'll do is I'll do it independently. I'll find a band. Um, hopefully they'll get some profile, and hopefully I can raise my profile with it, and that be my ticket in. So. Um, you know, I was just kind of looking at the, the 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 market at the time, and it was it was you know sort of um, uh, it was you know dominated by boy bands and stuff like that. You know, we were talking about the golden era of pop. You know, sort of you know mid to late nineties, and um, and I was kind of right. Well, okay. Well, first of all, boy bands only appeal to to fifty percent of the population, so only appeal to, to girls really. Um, so, but if we can put a band together, I think it should be a girl band. I think it can be sassy, sexy, aspirational. You know, boys are like them, girls are like it, um, and aspire to be them, etc. So, okay, so you've doubled the net there. Then we'll make it five members, and we'll make we'll, we'll break the you know the kind of the population down into five different kind of characters. So we'll grow the net again, and it literally was as crude as that. And and I think. Being that young um, and being quite, you know, just fearless, really, it was just, it just, just kind of just went at it without overthinking it too much. It was, um, other than just trying to hit as the mass market, um, and that's how it, that that's how it happened. And that's you know, I just then set about then trying to recruit the the individual characters. I've made a mood board of what the, each of those characters were going to be like and who they represented within the spectrum of females. Um, and then, you know, as a 21-year-old, you go out and go and meet girls. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's what it was. It's a difficult job. Yeah. And so the, who, who was your favourite? Who, who, who's your favourite Spice Girls? Oh. <laughs> I know who his least favourite was from the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, I mean, look, I, I, I admire them. You, you probably say least favourite would be Jerry, but I also admire her for being one of the most driven, ambitious go-getters that I've ever worked with in the music industry. I mean, she just... If she was in this in, in this room now, she would. She got heat-seeking kind of uh, sight that would kind of pick out the ones that really would make a difference to her, and she would make a beeline for them. And she just kn knew how to get if what she had in her sight and how to get get to it. So I admire her for that. Um, you know, they're all different. I mean, you know, and. Emma's lovely, really sweet. I could go, you know, go out for dinner with Emma tomorrow, and we'd have just a really nice time. Um, and uh, and Victoria, I think people get Victoria wrong. I mean, she's actually really, she's not so sour-faced. You know, she really has got a really quite a wicked humour, actually. Yeah. Um, so they all offer something unique. Um, and, I, I, and just to switch to Simon Cowell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys, you see how my head works because I've now just got all, uh, and five, you launched five with Simon Cowell. Yeah. Simon Cowell, one of the, 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 really one of the greatest, I mean, I call him the greatest business people yeah. of all time. Yeah. What is the one thing that you would take from the experience of working with Simon Cowell that, that we should all be more like, be more like Simon? If that's a good <laughs> hashtag, I don't know. Simon definitely was a mentor to me. Um, 
you know, growing up in the music industry. Um, you know, he he really believed in me at the time. With you people in the room probably know the story that I kind of got got the elbow for Simon Fuller um, as the Spice Girls went on to be, uh, you know, have a successful career. But Simon, um, actually through another mutual friend who was the MD at BMG at the, moment, at the time, he said, Simon said, look, you know, I don't want to sign an expert Spice Girls. I want to meet the guy who put them together. And um, Hugh Goldsmith, who was the MD at the time, said, I can make that happen. I walked into the room and Simon said to me, is it, you know, commiserations or celebrations? I said, well, it's a bit of both, but, you know, I'm ready to get back on the horse. And he said, that's brilliant. So what do you want to do? And I told him about this boy band five, which, you know, kind of wasn't so schmaltzy. It was a bit more laddish and, um, you know, the music was harder and all that sort of stuff. He's like, absolutely, I want to do that. So he backed me. Um, and what I'd say about Simon, he's, 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 a, he's a very, very, he's a ruthless businessman, but he's, You're about to say something else, right? <laughs> <laughs> but he is really, I mean, he's, he, he's so charming and every, he, he, you know, he, he makes everyone feel important, important. Really? In, anyone in this room, whether you are, you know, a junior scout to, you know, the, 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 the chairman of the record company, he makes everyone feel special. Because he um, means it. He, it. Yeah, I think he does actually. I, you know, it's having faith, like you say, having faith in your team. Yeah. You know, from 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 you know the the lower ranks to the higher ranks. It's kind of you know they all bring something to the table, and he empowers them. Um, and I think that's what we've done with our business. Um, it's certainly the way I've tried to conduct myself throughout business. And, and I guess that's kind of something I learned from him. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Now, yeah. guys, I wish I wish we could keep on going on and on. <laughs> uh, I've loved this. Um, uh, I hope you guys have. Uh, I hope you guys online love it too. Final question. And just gives a snapshot now of, of where you guys are going to be in the next, I don't know. What should we say, Greg? Next, next year or two? <coughs> 18, months. 18, 18 months. Thank you, Greg. 18 months. Tell us where you're going to be. So... Um, we are we are already rolling out around the world as COVID restrictions lift, which is uh, is making life much easier for us. You know, it's, it's been a difficult eighteen months for everybody. So yeah, we will be we are already live in the southern hemisphere. We're live in Europe. We'll be live hopefully stateside. We'll take more European markets, and we'll continue to grow the business. Um, we have we have a wealth of data in what we do. So we are already having song funds and record labels and everybody come at us to say, oh my gosh, you know, you can you can tell us when things are trending ahead of anybody because you, you can literally see what's happening in the real world at real time. So we'll open up our product sets that way um, and continue to collaborate with, with business. The, the best thing about, you know, creating and starting your own business is, you know, once you've been through that first couple of years of pain, and it, and it is painful, it is an absolute slog that most people do do not realise, you know, the 18-hour days are, are probably an underestimation, which when you've got a newborn baby on top of that is even even harder. But it for me, it gave me more focus. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky, you know, so to Greg, who we pointed out, has, has an amazing business, which is going to help solve the carbon neutral problem, which we're, you know, very topical, particularly this week with everything that's going on there. There's another friend of mine in the audience, Greg Watts, who has a, a business matchmaking service, which I invested in and, and support as well. And it just, it gives us the opportunity to, to, to continue to grow ourselves and our own careers, but work with the best people as well. And that's 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 just the, the best part of the day for us. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it there. Um, thank you so much. You're going to be staying for the panel session. You've now got to go over to one of your investments. Is that right? The, oh, I'm on a video shoot. You're sorry. on a video yeah, shoot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but a million thanks for you, thank you very both much. joining. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I'm all out of Spice Girls tax now, so I'm literally going to finish with another cheesy line. Cool. I can't. I'm struggling. Really? <laughs> you can say pure and simple want to be there. Yes, sir. Oh. Pure and simple. Yeah. Um, uh, hold on. Hold on. You all said what we bewitched. Yeah. Some people say look like me, Dad. I've done it. I'm smashing. Okay. Um, guys, thank you so much. A round of applause for everyone. <laughs> <laughs>